but ultimately, it's a it's a very exhilarating. And I tip my hat to these producers. For Charles Roven, I've met uh, 15 years ago when we made work made Three Kings together, and. Um, uh, we've always been looking for something else to do with Richard Suckle was with him even then. John Gordon was, was worked with me on Flirting with Disaster. I've known these people a long time. And I was very happy they had worked with Eric Singer on this beautiful story of characters in this New York area, which became a treasure trove to me. And I asked for permission to, uh, I asked Eric's permission and their permission to, if I may try to tell it as I had been telling stories recently. And again, with their support, I was able to do that. Otherwise, there would be no movie, you know, so... And, um, w you know, as producers, we made a great team from, uh, as as uh, David said, uh, with John and Richard, myself, and Megan, who came in to not only uh, co-finance the picture, but also was a very active part of the producing team. Um, we all, one of the reasons that there's four of us is because we were scrambling, and we needed all of us to actually circle the wagons, but we did it uh, in a, a very collaborative, actually fun way. It takes a team, and, I, and Megan Ellison, again, the, the patron saint, I have the little card from the Catholic Church in my car, um, um, of, of cinema. Um, it might be in the synagogue as well. I just, you know, um, uh, I play for both teams. But um, <laughs> she, uh, you know, she's, I've been sitting and having, uh, talking to this woman, this very young woman, um, for over five, six years, saying we want to make a movie together. And she hung in there which many people wouldn't have done. I mean, and, and Sony as well. Um, I, I tip my hat and I thank them before, before, for, for believing and taking a leap of faith as these actors did because, you know, it's a very it was a very moving thing. It was, it was very dynamic. There were times when actors could make the schedule, times when they didn't know if they could make the schedule. So hold on, don't, we're still, the bus is still going forward. That's a time when a lot of uh, you know, producers might say, oh gosh, everybody out of the pool to mix my bus and pool metaphor. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, there's a pool on a bus. It's in a dream, Christian's dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they, I mean, they believe all the way and they, go and, they, and they back you all the way, which means everything to me. The other thing I want to be sure to say before we wrap this up is that the, the, that always strikes me is that it's, it occurs to me when we were talking about the bankers with these guys, speaking of financing movies and bankers, um, is that it's almost quaint to me that there was cash in a briefcase because where we've come since then, and I, and I also, you know, tip my hat to the FBI for anything they've tried to do, and to any of these, you know, and because t here we are, thirty years later, and it's tens of hundreds of millions of dollars that there is no briefcase necessary, and it's legal, uh, the way it's been made uh, for many people for, to transfer the funds for influence and for other matters, and uh, we don't even know we see none of it. And we don't even know where the money went or the, how the money came in. So I think we've, we're, it was a much more innocent time um, in many respects. So, uh, Hi, and, um, and that's the answer about the producers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bradley and Amy, I wanted to ask you about the scene where you dance together because it's such a lovely scene. And I wondered how, for you, Bradley, it was dancing with Amy instead of Jennifer at this time. And if the dancing scene is now a crucial component to working with David A. Russell. Um, oh, we had a ball uh, yeah. dancing together. Yeah, so do we. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it was. It was. You know, uh, they're both wonderful dancers, and uh, and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who's better, Bradley? Come on now. Come on, it's just it's a simple question. <laughs> So simple. <laughs> I have an answer. <laughs> you know, it's great though. Uh, we were in the <laughs> office during pre-production, and uh, David had a little record player, and he was playing the Duke Ellington song, and he went to do a production meeting. Where he was, and yeah, and Christian's downstairs shaving his head, and we're 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 sitting in the office uh, with John. Was John there? I, there was somebody else in the room, I think. I can't remember. And uh, and then Amy just started dancing, and then Amy and I just started dancing. And the, the door had a window in it, uh, so you could see through it. And as David was walking back, or maybe he even saw it from afar, because the production meeting was happening just outside, and he sort of was just standing by the door watching this happen. And then he and I were, I think we and I looked like. Because then she was just dancing, and then all of a sudden that became an, a part of the, a big part of this woman, this character's story, her backstory, and then it also fueled that scene between us. 
I may be in I mean, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. Go ahead. Okay, you go. <laughs> uh, I, I was trained as a dancer, so it's always been a part of how I storytell is th through my body and through movement. I always find a character through movement. So one of the things that struck me about once, once I had the wardrobe and I knew that she was going to be a sexual being, I really thought about people who also had an elegance with their sexuality and their the power that they had through their sexuality. So for me, dancing was sort of like it kind of was how I started to feel her. You know, I thought about Anne Margaret and I thought about Sid Therese and these dancers who still, they, they seemed like they were in control because of the way they moved their body. So that's kind of what I started thinking about in that moment. And and uh, dancing with Bradley is awesome. He is such a good dancer. It was so much fun. You know, I think why, he's. Why, it was. Why, why is, a lot of fun. Why, why is, why no There's still time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why is nobody talking about how well I Earth like dances? dancing. Which, well, we danced really, that's really that's well that's together that's too. It was just slow. <laughs> We invented a dance for this character. I called Irving the badger because he moved like a badger, and when he took his glasses off, you would see his blinking badger eyes in the light of the day. And uh, he danced, uh, dances beautifully, and then he danced as this man who sunk three inches into his spine and herniated a disc, and when he became Irving. And that them dancing across Park Avenue was a highlight for me of, of my life, yeah. and uh, playing the music as we were uh, crossing the street, mm. and uh, it was just magical. And... Um, but also listen to that, that you know when 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 Jeremy and me were singing to Delilah and doing a little dance around the place. You listen to the lyrics of that song, Emma. Yeah, that's a sick song. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> it sounds so uplifting. But you hear the lyrics, you go, Tom Tom Jones was sick. Didn't he? Yeah. Christian's badger dance looked kind of like, do you guys know the, uh, this is, just, I didn't tell you this then, but it kind of reminded me, you know, at the end of uh, Caddyshack. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> sort of that, that, that gopher at the end of Caddyshack. That's kind of what it looks like. Fortunately, I can't remember that. But I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but, but I will go look at it. I will go look it up now. We're going to go to the last question now. Hi, over here. Um, for the filmmakers, I'm wondering, um, are there any particular uh, actors or actresses from the golden age of cinema that you imagine in these roles? And... Uh, what, uh, which films do you imagine double feature, uh, double featuring with uh, American Hustle? What would pair well? And the actors could answer too if they want. That's a dangerous question. Because <laughs> I, I would have a lot of fun answering it, but I, th I think it may seem uh, more f med better for a private parlor game than for like public consumption, because it might seem like we're trying to say something. I mean, I immediately think of Carol Lombard with this one, but I don't, you know, I mean, and that there's I can do that with everybody, but I don't know that it's, I don't know. The only thing I always said that the thing that got through uh, that got Irv through his bad times was just imagining a relationship with Shirley Bassey. That was uh, that was the thing. When I when I when I spoke with uh, Mel Weinberg, he just he's in love with Shirley Bassey, you know. So whenever there were bad times, I would imagine dancing with Shirley Bassey, you know. Who sang the, the James Bond songs? Interestingly, which is interesting that that, that weird kismet that she sang. She danced to a James Bond song. Um, I just feel like we've, um, I, I, as a, as a, as a uh, sort of a, uh, as a director, I feel like, I feel I want my man J. Renz, Jeremy, to say more because he's become he was the hearting the, the beating heart of the picture with his connection to the community, the and the man that he was based on who died at the end of production, Angelo Arachetti, uh who did put a dollar in his pocket, the man who had put a dollar in his pocket, but he also loved his community of Camden and loved New Jersey at a time when it, the economy was in the gutter. And the character that this man, Irving, played based on truly had never had a friend like that and had never seen such a man who loved his family and his community so much. And, and yeah, and witnessing his altruism changed his life forever. You know, he just was in love with the guy and was killing himself with the fact that he was conning him the whole time, you know, despite the fact this was the truest male relationship he'd ever had in his life. So my one question for you, Jeremy, is how, how was it comfortable for you to, um, did you feel that this guy was like you? Or I know we've talked about this, but, you know, he was in many ways uh, uh, not the, the, the most, the, the direct way of your nature. Is that, why is this Q&A going like this? <laughs> 
Because I love you and I, feel I want to hear from you. Yeah. So I, want every, I want everybody else to hear. I want everybody else. I want to hear you talk. I'm good, brother. I'm good. I got to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. Right, I'll interpret for Mr. Renner. Anyway, he... Okay, what did she say? She said, can we go? I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. She'd say that every day on set.